This is a message to Oklahoma fans and Sooner faithful everywhere. Bring it on in. Bring it on in. Come on, bring it on in. You and I already have a great rapport. The foundation of our relationship is rock solid. But to all of us here at SEC Unfiltered, from the entities across the internet that talk about the SEC, welcome to the conference where it just means more. You made it. July 1st has arrived. You and Texas have officially planted your roots, a part of a 16-team prestige conference that is going to run rampant in the new world of the NCAA. You got to earn your stripes. There will be people from other programs that will say Oklahoma doesn't belong here. You and I both know that's a lie. We know for a fact that you are one of the prestige programs in the industry. But with the foundation that you have in place, plus the boosters and, of course, your NIL collective, you are going to take names and kick ass very soon. And I got five bold predictions that I think will happen over the next five to ten years in Norman. So real quickly, if you're new to the channel, welcome on into SEC Unfiltered. It's Cole Thompson here. Make sure that you like the video, hit the ring notification. That way you don't miss a single episode of SCCU because we're talking college athletics every single day. Download the podcast version of the show wherever you get your podcast listening systems. You like this type of content. You love this type of content. Make sure that you leave a five-star review. You hate this type of content. Make sure that you leave a one-star review. You don't hate this type of content. Make sure that also you're following us on all the socials, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at SEC Unfiltered. You want to follow me on socials, at Mr. Cole Thompson. And to keep up with the number one conference, the conference that Oklahoma and Texas just joined, Make sure you visit secunfiltered.com. This episode is brought to you by Roback. Use promo code SECU for 20% off all joggers, polos, hoodies, shorts, much, much more. Promo code SECU at Roback.com for 20% off. Oklahoma is going to be a threat. People don't want to admit it, but unfortunately, for those on the outside looking in, you don't know what belongs inside the halls of Norman. They have the backing. They have the boosters. They have the NIL collective. They got some good coaches in place too. So these are going to be predictions that I think will come true. I'm not going to go bold and say Oklahoma wins a national championship. That feels a little far-fetched because only one team gets to come out on top. And I don't know what the hell the college football playoff is going to look like right now. So let's temper our expectations. And one honorable mention Skip Johnson, because there's a lot of rumors going around what happens with him. I think he stays in Oklahoma, but never say never. If he does stay in Norman, um, they will go back to the College World Series and they will appear in a College World Series final as SEC champs. They know how to recruit the East Texas. They know how to recruit in Oklahoma. They know how to work the transfer portal. Skip has been able to build a program of prestige up there. And I just feel like that even though they are joining the belly of the beast, which features programs like Texas A&M, Tennessee, you got to throw Texas in with Jim Schlossnagel, you still are going to be a viable threat. Now, with that in mind, number five, Patty Gasco is already a proven commodity. She has firmly already taken her spot on the mantle of SEC Mount Rushmore because of that's how good she is. Eight national championships in women's softball, including four since 2021. They are going to own the SEC. Like the way that Texas is talked about being able to show up to the party with their chair and kick people out. That's going to be Oklahoma. It's the exact same. Patty Gasso knows what she is doing when building around the diamond. She knows how to work the transfer portal. She's been one of the prestige people when it comes to pioneering the industry. And let's also just be a little transparent here. The fact that the Women's College World Series isn't moving out of Oklahoma City anytime soon is a major advantage. You can go ahead and say that it's not that you can lose any given weekend, any day on the any day through seven innings. It still does matter. The fan base that is willing to travel just right up the road to be able to make it loud and proud inside the complex is a big reason why I think Oklahoma has dismantled opponents. And they're going to continue. It could be Alabama, could be Florida, could be Tennessee if they get back on course, Georgia if they turn the corner. It doesn't matter. You have your Nick Saban of softball. She is truly the GOAT when it comes to talking about this sport she is still going to run rampant in this conference. So I have no doubt about it that Patty Gasso, before she retires, and that could be who knows how long, she's 62. So maybe we're talking about another 10 years. Maybe we're talking about another five years. She will win at least one national title. Oklahoma, the Lady Sooners, are going to be fine in the conference. Next up, I think you are going to have a new athletic director. I think what Joe Castiglione has done 
is phenomenal. He has been there since 1998. He's seen multiple championships come through. On top of that, he also has been a big benefactor of getting Oklahoma to the SEC. Him and Chris Del Conte were working behind closed doors to guarantee their spot in the makings. And I know that they are in great hands moving forward because of what Castiglione has done, especially when it comes to the resources, his ability to work with NIL collectives, his ability to be able to build a backing of a fan base that wants to commit to their program. Oklahoma's got it made and largely due to Castiglione being the guy. But you have to realize right now, he is going to be in the next five years, 71 years old. 71 is a challenging age. Yes, you can talk about what Scott Woodward is. Yes, you can talk about Greg Byrne. You can talk about where these athletic directors rank, Chris Del Conte. They're all getting up there in age. But at the same time, when you've been running the same program since 1998, once you start to see the fruits of your labor reach its pinnacle, like maybe going to the NCAA Final Four in women's basketball or men's basketball or going and winning a college World Series in baseball or going to a national championship in football in the SEC with the resources and the benefactors that come involved with it, you think that right now you are going to be in a great spot. So I just look and I say to myself, as much as I would love to say he is going to be around for the long term, age has a factor, longevity has a factor, change is inevitable. It feels like Castiglione will not be here by the time that you celebrate a decade in the SEC. Maybe it's a little longer than five years. I'll give you that, but I don't know if it'll be a full decade. Number three, and this one is probably the closest one, uh, Porter Moser will not be the coach, but much longer. So Moser, my apologies, I didn't say Moser, Moser, Moser. God, I got to get that one down. Uh, is 54 and 45 in Big 12 play. He has yet to be to an NCAA tournament, and the highest that they have finished in Big 12 play is seven. Now, let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. The Big 12 is not a slouch when it comes to basketball. They aren't. Kansas exists there. Houston just joined the party with Kelvin Sampson. Baylor with Scott Drew has been consistent. You also got Iowa State that's been scrappy. West Virginia has been scrappy. There's been some good programs. Oklahoma State's had its few years. So you can't say that there are reasons to doubt Oklahoma making the jump over. But the SEC is a gauntlet. I mean, it is. Like, the Big 12 is good. The SEC is good. One is great in the postseason. One is hit and miss. Texas A&M is really well put together underneath Buzz Williams. Alabama out of nowhere with Nate Oates feels like going to be a front runner and contender for years. Auburn's got Bruce Pearl. Rick Barnes hasn't gone anywhere. In fact, he's gotten better since arriving at, you know, at, at, at Kentucky and Knoxville. You also got to throw in what John Calipari is going to do at Arkansas. Florida has been consistent. LSU does not stay down out of the count for a long term. And this is Oklahoma that we're talking about. They want to be prestige. They want to be a part of the conversation. They want to be in the mix alongside Texas, alongside Alabama, alongside Auburn. They believe that they're that good of a team. So for Moser, as much as you got to understand, he may get you to a 20-win season next year. You may feel good about where he is bringing the program's direction, especially after what he did during his time at Loyola Chicago. But in the belly of the beast of the SEC, where money is going to talk, the buyout is not going to be as expensive because of what you will get in media rights contracts. If he does not have a substantial year, and it doesn't feel like Oklahoma is trending up on the hardwood, he's probably going to be out of a job. And who's going to be his replacement? I don't like playing that guessing game. Like Florida Atlantic's coach that just got hired not too long ago, uh, the guy who was at uh, St. Mary's, not St. Mary's, what was it? The Peacocks. Uh, why am I blanking on that one? Uh, who got to Seton Hall. Like those are things that just happen because if they go on runs. So I don't like to go and pigeonhole myself and say, this guy is going to come out on top because it would be wrong. Next up, there will be a player from Oklahoma's offense that makes it to the Heisman Trophy presentation. I believe that full wholeheartedly. I truly do think that now that you're bringing in Seth Luttrell, you will get a quarterback. And let's just be real. It's going to be a quarterback because usually unless there is some reason that we look from the outside, quarterback award, it's always going to be that way. The fact that you're bringing in Seth Luttrell, who I think is a great fit for what they want to run underneath Brett Venables, is going to be a blessing in disguise for Jackson Arnold. He may not be the guy. You may have to look at yourself and say, well, Arnold's going to be here for the next two years. We may not be up to par to where we are winning 11 plus games. We are winning 12 games a year. We're competing for national championships. So it may be someone else. It could be very well Jaden O'Neill, who's part of the 2026 class, part of a top three recruiting class right now. 
It could be a transfer. Like it literally could be you get Dylan Gabriel 2.0, but instead of him leaving Norman for his final season, he comes to Norman for his final season. And the roster is really well built and the offensive line is stable underneath Bill Beatonbow. And they end up terrorizing everybody. And because they're on the main stage and they're a big time brand, Oklahoma punches its ticket deeper and deeper and deeper into the playoff conversation, thus elevating the stats. But I do think that Oklahoma will be able to hold its own in football. I do think that Jackson Arnold is going to be a front runner after this season to take over the mantle as QB1 in the SEC. And it would be wrong to not say that. Think about this for a minute. Graham Mertz is going to be gone from Florida. That does also include potentially Jalen Milrow, Carson Beck, Jackson Dart, all at their respective programs. Brady Cook is not going to be in Columbia anymore. You don't know what you got in Connor Wegman. You don't know what you have in Taylor Green out in um out in Arkansas. You don't know what you have with Peyton Thorne, and he's gone after this year. So really, it comes down to potentially him and Nico Iamaliava as the front runners to take over as QB1 in 2025, just simply based off of productivity. And maybe, just maybe, that's the conversation we have with Jackson Arnold making it to New York City in 2025, and potentially also leading into the number one thing. And this 100%, I believe, is going to happen, Oklahoma fans. So if you've stuck with me this long, strap in. Oklahoma will win the SEC. They will be the number one seed in the college football playoff, and they will win multiple playoff games. I will not go and say that they will win a national championship. I will not go to say they will make a national championship. That would be basically writing a death sentence for myself for Bad Take Boulevard whenever it doesn't come true, if it doesn't come true. But you got to realize something. You know this as well as I do. The Crimson and Cream, yes, I said it right this time. Do not get mad at me like I said maroon and white. My apologies for that one. The Crimson and Cream is strong. It's bold. It will do whatever it takes to hold its own. They want to light that flame and see it extinguish high and bright into the night sky. They want to rally the troops and make sure that Gaylord every single Saturday is rocking and rolling and that it is a fearful cathedral of chaos. That's what they want, and they can do that because they have the resources. They have the boosters. In my opinion, they have the right coach. There's people out there that believe that paying Brett Venables after a 10-win season where you lost to Kansas last year was a bad deal. Guys, I'm going to be completely transparent for you. It was the best deal possible because of now, after what he did last season, it just shows he made the right call to go leave Clemson and return back to Norman, and it also shows... Well, he's probably going to be a little bit more loyal to when it comes to other contracts. Let's just say Clemson opens up in a few years and he's the first phone call. Well, they already showed support that they love him so much in Norman that they will give him a contract after losing to Kansas. And let's be real. It wasn't they lost to Jalen Daniels. That's a whole different conversation. They, they lost to Jason Bean and they lost to a backup offensive line. So throw that aside. There is loyalty here big time loyalty. And now that you have him locked up when he didn't have to, he may say, you have to make me an offer so grand, I can't turn it down. And even then he still might. So you buy in with him. Not only that, you're going to be able to bring in SEC quality recruits. You got a top five recruiting class going into 2025. Like people are kind of sleeping on Oklahoma when it comes to that too. They already are building themselves up to be competitive in the SEC next year. And well beyond that, top three class in 2026, you look at this roster, you look at what they can utilize in the transfer portal, you look at the NIL collected that's in place, it is going to be hard-pressed to say that once they get a more relaxed schedule, a foundation on the offensive line, stability at wide receiver, past veterans like Deion Burks who's coming on in, bringing in some transfers that are going to be plug-and-play additions that will elevate certain spots, and they get a defense that already matches the one that just terrorized the Big 12, they will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with teams like Tennessee, with teams like Auburn, with teams like Alabama, with teams like Texas A&M, with teams like Texas, with teams like Georgia, Ole Miss. They will be able to say, yeah, we mean business. So I don't doubt for one second that in the next decade, Oklahoma will not only be playing for a title in Atlanta, but they will be the number one team in the country they not only that, they will win that conference title. They will get the bye the first round. They will be the number one team in all of college football, the number one seed. 
and they will win multiple playoff games to put themselves in a prime location to hoist up a national title. But there you go. Top five predictions I have for Oklahoma over the next five, 10 years. Let me know in the comments section down below, where was I right? Where was I wrong? What am I too high on? What am I too low on? Make sure that you also hit subscribe, the ring notification. That way you don't miss a single episode. Leave a one-star review if you hate this type of content. You'd be lying to yourself, but if you want to, go ahead. Leave a five-star review. If you love this type of content, you'd be telling the truth and actually doing us a major favor. Make sure that also you're following us on socials, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at SEC Unfiltered. You want to follow me on social media, at Mr. Cole Thompson, my own YouTube channel, at Mr. Cole Thompson. And to keep up with the number one conference, the conference that you're now part of, Oklahoma Faithful, make sure that you visit secunfiltered.com. Welcome on into the SEC. I'm Cole Thompson, folks. Later.